for I was just a boy when I came here. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise and bring you back to this land. Greece's impact on the Western world is significant. So significant, it has forced the United States to be the leader in the eschatological cultural signs of the end times. It is said that materialism is the most powerful religion in the world. The eschatological sign of moral decay is evident throughout the globe. Families are fragmented. Boys are not boys. Girls are not girls. And the masses are into same-sex marriages. Recently, a lady in New York married her dog. How ridiculous is that? Well, when you look at a depraved society, it's not really that ridiculous. Daniel, Ezekiel, Timothy, or Paul, been appalled at the condition our world is in today. In fact, they wouldn't even recognize it. The rise of Jew haters sets the stage for the events foretold by Ezekiel in chapters 38 and 39, which prophesies an invasion of Israel in the end. Even Russia is signing peace agreements with the Islamic countries that despise Israel. Christians are being persecuted more today than any other time in history. Worse yet, there is an ultimate cultural threat of all, and that is apathetic Christians who could care less about the signs of the times. What caused the Western world to delude into apathy? The answer would be materialism. Up to recently, most of the world has been rocked asleep by the love of money and possessions. However, the Bible has warned us about this unambiguous cultural sign. Another grievous sign is the love of self. When the masses dethrone God as the Supreme Lord, humanity defaults to self as God. The self-life then becomes our first love. Thus we cannot be told what to do or what to believe about God. There once was a day when the secular was the propagators of self-life. However, Today we see self-proclaimed Christians taking the lead. Today we see believers hacking the identity of God and taking ownership of who He is as a way to prove our opinionated selves. Let's face it, the expression of moral decline is at its worst. Most think that the days before Noah's big boat experience was the epitome of moral decay. Even though I agree with the generalized statement, the time shortly before the appearance of the Antichrist is likely to be as or more horrific than the times between Adam and Noah. Paul wrote in his second letter to Timothy these words. But realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, 
treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power, avoid such men as these. Paul's revelation in the last days was after Christ's birth, death, resurrection, and ascension, a key doctrinal injection here. He is assuring us that the difficult times that he stated will come. We are called to watch for the symptoms of these times, lovers of self, money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to authorities, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, gossipers without any self-control, brutally bitter, haters of good, filled with betrayal, and worse, lovers of pleasures versus lovers of God. All of this results in the masses pretending to be godly when they deny the power and life of Jesus Christ. What is Paul's counsel? Avoid such men or women as these. Welcome to number 22, The Ram and the Goat. Depravity is godlessness, and the world is certainly rooted in this modality. Moral is in knowing the difference between right and wrong. Morality is the differentiation of intentions, decisions, and actions. Immorality is actions that are harmful or offensive to the biblical standards God has placed in society. Now the clincher. To change these standards, the masses must revise the standards of conduct for God's society by changing the society to match the internal state of humanity's depravity. In other words, depraved people must rewrite a Bible of sorts to grant self-life permission to continue in self-pleasures. Folks, we are in the middle of humanity rewriting a moral code that has no right or wrong. Since the ram represents the Persian Empire in our passage, it stands for structure or governance led from the top down. The goat represents Greece or a culture. The goat represents Greece or a culture-driven system ruled from the bottom up. It's called democracy. In Daniel's vision, we see these two forces show up in the form of a ram and the second as a goat. The Persian force, the ram, was budding toward the west, north, and south. Their power was authoritarian, and the people found it impossible to be rescued from it. While this abusive leadership was in full power, a goat, Greece from the west consumed the earth without touching the ground. It had one horn between its eyes. It attacks the ram and defeats it by taking away its power. What we have here is a pictorial of the seven-year reign of the Antichrist, the first half being democracy or culture and the second half being authoritarian. Satan regains control over the earth by swapping the two powers, by providing peace, peace, while saving his authoritarian wrath for the grand finale, the second half of his reign. Let's review our scriptures. Study chapter 8. But today we're going to focus on verses 1 through 6. And it says, In the third year of the reign of Belshazzar, the king, a vision appeared to me, Daniel, 
subsequent to the one which appeared to me previously. I looked in the vision, and while I was looking, I was in the citadel of Susa, which is the providence of Elam. And I looked in the vision, and I myself was beside the Eula Canal. Then I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, a ram, which had two horns, was standing in front of the canal. Now the two horns were long, but the one was longer than the other, with the longer one coming up last. I saw the ram budding westward, northward, and southward. And no other beast could stand before him, nor was there anyone to rescue from his power. But he did as he pleased and magnified himself. While I was observing, behold, a male goat was coming from the west over the surface of the whole earth without touching the ground. And the goat had a conspicuous horn between his eyes. He came up to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing in front of the canal, and rushed at it in his mighty wrath. May God bless his scriptures for today. Let's take a look at the patterns of evidence. While Daniel is speaking of the transition of power during the days of Daniel, a word picture prophecy is offered to us regarding the end time spoken of in Revelation's book. Old Testament prophecies are patterns of evidence of New Testament prophecies. The common mistake that Bible readers make is attempting to pigeonhole Old Testament prophecies into fulfilled prophecies. While this holds a certain amount of truth, God reveals patterns of evidence of his projected warnings in all scriptures, from Genesis to Revelation. We can secure our full picture of God's Alpha and Omega by embracing this. Reviewing the Goat, the Dominance Through Culture the Greek Empire was established by Alexander the Great. Alexander was trained and tutored by Aristotle, who inspired him with his interest in the philosophy of democracy, advancing kingdom work through the people. While Aristotle was an advancer in enslaving the people, Alexander moved beyond this ancient form of rule by using public opinion to position the leader as a public servant. However, when he was on the battlefield, he could care less about democracy and charged ahead ruthlessly. Once he conquered the people, he killed their leaders, then he empowered the people. In this method, the goat, Greece, conquered the Medo-Persian Empire spoken of in Daniel's vision. After Alexander conquered old Babylon's Persian Empire, Greece became the world's dominant leader. This leader's organic goal was to establish a universal monarchy with a modern flair of allowing the people to assist in the rule by opinions. Since he was well-groomed in philosophy, medicine, and scientific investigation, his new world order became the leader in cultural advancement. In fact, his views on the people's opinions ruling from the bottom up became an ideology that can be seen in countries globally to this day. The bottom line is the ram rules by brute strength and the goat rules by individualized ideas and self-governance while gaining dominance over the people through the deception of fake peace. Now let's look at the ram, dominance through force. 
The ram is the symbol of imperialism at its best. Today's leftover modern-day Persian imperial countries are the Islamic-ruled territories surrounding Israel today. The Persian leadership style is dictatorship, usually ruled by religious leaders. The original group of Persians was established in the modern-day Iran area. They were and are the most organized form of covert, subversive strategic leadership on the face of the earth. Early on, they were referenced as a professional army. Even though Alexander the Great conquered their earlier empire, upon his death, most of the empire fell to the rule of the Iranian elitists by the second century BC. When you read or hear about the ram in prophecies, you can be assured this symbol is directly related to the sons of Ishmael, Islamist. When Daniel referenced the ram budding or conquering westward, northward, southward, but does not mention the east, while Israel is titled the Middle East, the Islamic people continue to be known as the people of the East. How does all this fit into our end times? The goat is the militant force that comes from the West. Today, the Western Empire is the United European Union. Since Revelation's book reveals the Islamic nations will corner Israel in the end, a global king or leader will rise and present Israel with a fake peace agreement that fails halfway through the reign of the European leader. In the meantime, this leader hides its agreement with the ram, Islam. In the Old Testament, what was done by force will be temporarily accomplished through peace talks. Now reviewing Satan blends the two systems. Satan will cleverly blend the two rule systems in his final attempt to control the world. In his first three and a half years, he will make use of the methods of the goat, democracy and global peace. In his second half, he will abruptly shift to the methods of the ram, dictatorship, with a twist of demonic monarchy. While Satan presents himself as the Christ of the Jews, he will be the Christ figure of the ram, the people of Ishmael. Due to the evangelism of the 144,000 pure bloodline Jews, he will be revealed as a fake. Upon this reveal, all hell will break out, which requires the second coming of the real Jesus to extinguish and punish this liar. After this, Jesus the Christ will take the throne and rules over the earth for 1,000 years. It's called the Great White Throne of Judgment. In conclusion, we have learned about the symbolic and literal meaning of the ram and the goat in Daniel's vision. When Daniel was fearful and troubled about the meaning of his vision, Gabriel, the archangel of God's messages, told him this. So he came near to where I was standing, and when he came, I was frightened and fell on my face. But he said to me, Son of man, understand that the vision pertains to the time of the end. What is this end that Gabriel is referencing? That would be none other than the end Revelation's book denotes. Coming up next in number 23, the goat, the Antichrist. Since the goat in Daniel's vision unveils the first and last king of the Western forces, 
it would be wise for us to spend some time sorting out the details of the final superpower Gabriel explains to Daniel. As Gabriel says, his power will be mighty, but not of his own power, and he will destroy to an extraordinary degree and prosper and perform his will. He will destroy mighty men and the holy people. Who is this mighty global leader who will destroy humanity, not using his own power? Whose power does he use? And why is this leader obsessed with destroying the holy people? We're going to attempt to answer these questions. We thank you for joining us today. We hope that what we have covered in Daniel's vision has brought a little more clarity to you understanding the prophecies being revealed in Revelation's book. As we move forward, we will clearly make solid connections between what God showed Daniel and what God showed John in the book of Revelation. Until next time, For I was just a boy when I came here, when seventy years were completed for Babylon. Have faith, my brothers. <laughs>